Hello and welcome to Vulcan. I'm Mick, we're playing Station Ears. Today we're obviously not on Mars and you might better get inside because it's about to get very hot. And yes, here we are on my Vulcan base. It has been an awful long time to get this base up and running because everything on Vulcan takes a very long time. Now I've got my base up, it is fully cooled, fully breathable, well, mostly breathable. Some spots you just don't make breathable. This is the front room that goes out to the outside. The outside you have an ex hot hydrogen atmosphere. If you mix it with oxygen, it will just explode spontaneously. And during the day, it gets up to 640 degrees Celsius. So it's, it's above ignition point. So in this room here, which accesses the outside, I have another airlock here leading out of here and in here, I just have a, have a carbon dioxide atmosphere, so if any hydrogen does sneak in, you see a little bit of it does get in, it can't explode because it's all a non-combustible atmosphere. Now this is my production room, it's still very basic in what it is, I haven't quite got around to updating that and putting in any sort of logistics, so it is just the bare basic printers sitting there. I have my furnace. Over here, one basic difference I've got to my furnace here is it actually has a radiator on the outside to heat the furnace up. So during the day, once the temperature outside, I've got a temperature gauge on the radiator there, once that temperature gets above this temperature, it opens a digital valve automatically to allow the outside air to, air to heat up my furnace. And just from the outside air with no fuel, that will get hot enough to smelt just about all your basic materials, so we'll smelt iron, we'll smelt silicon, we'll do your steel, and your basic alloys as well. You still need the fuel system up for your very expensive alloys, your exotics. But that's what I've got there, so it's still basically the same furnace, it's just the, the difference now is that the radiator is for heating it instead of cooling it. Next up we can go into the base, this was a the first basic room I had, and it was the only room I had in there for a while. It was the only place I could pop my helmet off to eat my food. And here we are into the main, our first little room. That was my entire base here for a little while. That was it, and I'm almost out of power. That's not good, but I'm in the green now. It's going back up again. My battery room, of course, with lots of big transformers. I eventually did expand my base out this way and I'm just currently building the, the nightclub in here. Now over here I have the elevator for the main base and I also have my main oxygen factory in here. Got all my rows and rows of ferns in here to try and generate enough oxygen to completely fill the base. I have filled the base, it is fully oxygenated. I can open my, my helmet now, it is cooled. It is oxygenated and very breathable. Uh, generating oxygen is a rather laborious, long-winded process there, but through a lot of plants you can get there. I go upstairs to the top floor of the disco. I also have my roof garden. So this is my other other oxygen factory up the top here. If we look around. Another full room of plants. That was the first one I planted just to get an oxygen going to get the base filled up. Still here, still doing its thing, and I still need all the oxygen. It did actually take me quite a while to actually be able to get enough carbon dioxide to keep it all going. Because although the atmosphere outside is mostly carbon dioxide, it is very hot. So to be able to cool it down enough to give to the plants took a while. It took a while. I planted too many plants originally and I had to run out of carbon dioxide. They all started to die. Now if we go down to the ground floor, we find the crew quarters, the living quarters. I have the, the bottom side of my, my oxygen farm there. I haven't quite filled the rest of it up yet because so I'm having a bit of trouble getting enough carbon dioxide for it. And as usual, I have my service tunnels all through here with all my pipes. Everything that gets routed through my base is all going through my service tunnels. This makes it a bit easier to get around because on Vulcan you do not want to be pulling any of these frames in and out. Especially in an oxygenated atmosphere, whenever you pull the frame out, it will replace that frame with 
outside oxygen, which outside atmosphere, which is a hot hydrogen, which will immediately explode and cause a fire in your base. Which, in case you're not sure, that's not good. That uh, here's our crew quarters for all our crew. The space crapper, of course, can't go far without that. And <laughs> nerd. And off we go. Now we've got the, oh, the good old hospital, of course. Looks very hospital -y. It's all plumbed up, all works. She's all good. And off to the front, we find the garden down here. This is my food production. I have carbon dioxide atmosphere in here to help the plants grow. It's all shut down at the moment because I have plenty of food, not a problem. Those are my Harveys, grow lights, we're all good. Of course, it's all got to be inside, away from the, the heat. And we come to the bottom floor, which is the atmospherics. Now, as with the top floor with the production area, this one does exit to the outside, so it is a carbon dioxide atmosphere in here just to keep everything safe and it is quite the atmospherics lab I must say not that impressed well I'll have a look that way that one better there you go so I have got the atmospherics working and I haven't used any physics cheese it is done without any vacuum rooms for, for sink seats it is all been done with air conditioners and a mere uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 atmospheric units to harvest four types of gas. Uh, yeah, it, it's hard work. Um, so, how have we done that? Well, outside I have not one, but three large insulated tanks. This one here is my coolant tank. It is hooked up to the car key line, which goes to all my air conditioners and coolers. During the day, everything, all my cooling systems just dump heat into that. And it's a large tank full of it, and it can hold a lot of heat. So outside, it has been all day, it is up to 139.1 degrees, got two megapascals in there. It is hooked up to a radiator, so that during the night, as it cools down to 126 degrees, the moment the outside radiator becomes less than the actual tank temperature, it automatically opens a valve to cool down, cool down the tank. So it doesn't actually ever cool down below 120 degrees, but that's enough. That's enough for us. And outside, it is hooked up to a very, very big radiator system, which that's all we can see from here, but... Until I go outside, you won't be able to see the rest of it. So that's how you do your cooling without having to cheese physics. And on the other side, I have a harvester. It's my second second coolant system there. It just harvests gas from the atmosphere and then cools it down through a cooler. I have a hyd hydrogen combustor, which will produce water from the hydrogen that I harvest. And of course, I only harvest gas at night because I don't want it to be too hot. If I have to cool it down from 600 degrees, it takes an awful lot of power. So if I could harvest it at night, it's only 120 degrees. So I can see there I have done a bit of harvesting. And the outside temperature is cooling down, almost getting to the time where I can start harvesting a bit more. Now I have filters there to actually pull the pollutant out and into my refrigerant tank. And I have the ones there just to get rid of the hydrogen because that is just bad news inside your base. So just get rid of it all completely. And then I have my reclamation tank, which is my recycling tank, which catches all the gas from the base. Over here I currently have a air conditioner trying to cool it down. There's not much in there at the moment. Once that cools down below 30 degrees, I've got it set up to automatically pump a bit of this stuff into that tank. So some of the heat gets absorbed by what we've got there, but it just keeps it all pretty cool. And as that cools it down a little bit further, I then have all my filters. And they'll just filter a bit off. Once they get too hot, they'll shut down. This one here is a bit hot still. Uh, once it drops below 30 degrees, it'll, once again, it'll pull in a bit from that tank there. 
a nil overheat until it cools down a bit. It's got its own air conditioner. I do have passive radiators on it, which will just emit all the all, all the heat into the room. And it's only 20 degrees in here, so that's all right. It's doing its job. I must have my oxygen, which is once again being produced by all the farms. It gets sucked into the return system and it then gets brought here. It goes from the reclamation tank through the cooler and into our harvester tanks. And from there they'll be pumped back into the base as part of the atmospherics. And this has taken me a long time to get it into a way that I'm reasonably happy with it, but I think what I've got here at the moment actually seems to be doing the job. It's, it's slow, but it does it. So a lot of power, a lot of cooling, a lot of air conditioners. If I switch them all on at the same time, then they will drain the power very quickly. Anyway, we're doing outside. We can go outside and have a look. 127 degrees. And the outside, it's my harvester tank. That is my reclamation tank. That is my refrigerant tank. And there's my radiator. There's some more of it. And there's some more of it. And that's just to get my tank, my refrigerant tank, back down to 120 degrees. Uh, well, I'll try to anyway, it doesn't always get there. But uh, there's the outside of my base. Lots of solar panels. I do not have a generator for this base. I am completely reliant on the solar power and the wind power. So we have my farm. So lots of solar panels. And the base is pretty much built into the side of a hill. So I don't like having the lava right underneath my floor. I find that a little bit unsettling. So find a spot high up on the mountain and the lava is a long way away. So just recently I've started to build the back room here. Once you have your essentials under control you can very quickly start to expand the base but there is lots of bulkheads airlocks and then through more air airlocks to get to the next part of the base. Now the base has been pressurized. I've got a green green light on my emergency lockdown and you can go straight into the rest of the base now. Of course you can't have a base without a basketball court. Now I do have, I do have a, a, a strange hydrogen leak in there at the moment. I can't quite figure out why. I think it might be a bit of a game bug. But uh, yeah, hydrogen leaks in there from somewhere. I'm not sure if it's just because it's a big open space and the game doesn't quite understand it's enclosed or what it is, but anyway. And of course, you've got to have a swimming pool. It's a hot place. So a swimming pool and a beach somewhere to sunbake. Once again, lots of bulkheads. You don't want a fire. Fires are very bad and I've had lots of them. Upstairs, that is outside. That is the back of the base. I have an airlock followed by another airlock because I really don't like being outside there. Just paranoia. And upside, we've got the administration wing. There it is. This is obviously the kindergarten. Uh, yeah. Well, same thing really, isn't it? And there, um, that's where they do, well, important stuff, I guess. What they, well, whatever managers do. It's up there and uh, more offices and... Ah, oh, jeez, again? What the... Uh, when are these people... Who's hiring these people? Damn it, whose office is that? Oh, okay. That that explains how they get jobs. Well, let's pretend we didn't see that. Ah, uh, more offices with with, with 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 a bed. With a bed. Well, yeah, that kind of makes sense. They're the same thing, really, aren't they? Hmm. Anyway, management. Yep. Where would we be without them? Hmm. But that's pretty much it. As I say, I'm still working on the disco. 
once I get that finished, I think my base will probably be complete. I just need some lights, some chairs, dance floor, a bar, a fire truck, all the things you need for a party. And that is my Vulcan base. I hope you've enjoyed the tour. Gift, gifts are available at the gift shop on the way out. Uh, I hope it's given you a few ideas of maybe inspired you to try new things on your own base. It is possible to do Vulcan, it just takes a long time. So, but anyway, give it a go, see what happens. If you like fires and explosions, oh, you love this one. Put in lots of airlocks, lots of bulk eggs, you'll be good. You'll occasionally have to abandon bits of your base, but you get them back. You get them back, don't worry about it. But until next time, happy building. See ya.